What's the buzz? This is Zeta Beetle, and welcome back to Galactic Swarm Squad. Whew! How long has it been since I've uh, uploaded the last episode? Eight months? <laughs> that is, uh, whew! Well, it's back, and I have every intention to uh, keep this going for longer than I had before. And Marty Jester agrees, so let's hit the road, Jack. Alrighty. We're going to be starting this off slow today. Essentially, what uh, that means is these rounds are not really going to have much uh, uh, done with them here. Uh, the real thing that I get done in this uh, uh, round in, in its entirety is to visit named locations. And seeing as how I've already landed, uh, yeah. That challenge has uh, some progress already attached to it. So, I grab me a uh, drum shotgun, and, uh, and I watch uh, Gunner uh, pop his uh, chug jug. And in case this wasn't entirely obvious, this is an unvaulted round. So the weapons that were vaulted at this point, including chug jugs, flint knock riot pistols, um, drum shotguns, uh, rapid fire p uh, the SMGs and the like, even rocket launchers uh, make a return here. So. I come over here and uh, and start to uh, trying to tear this guy down, but he ends up uh, taking me out instead. And Gunner, I think, follows either shortly before or shortly after. I don't exactly know exactly when, but uh, yeah, the only thing I get done here is to visit name locations. Same quest, different POI. So, this time, we are landing at Salty Towers, which is essentially uh, uh, Chapter 2's Tilted Towers. Like, uh, uh, Lazy Lake didn't fill that role in already. But with the um, uh, zero point being unstable at this point, um, it kind of counts, so I move on out of here, and uh, and uh, I start uh, searching for some weapons uh, that would better my chances um, against uh, any opponent that came my way. I get a rapid fire SMG and a chug jug, and you might think that that would uh, help. Uh, uh, that that would help me um, uh, uh, significantly, but unfortunately, in a place like Salty Towers, no such luck. Even though the fish stick uh, was immediately taken out by somebody else, so pretty well instant karma. <laughs> anyway, onwards to the next round. This one is a tad longer, and I think it still has only one challenge attached to it, but of a different sort. This time, it's to search chests or ammo boxes. So, I head over to, um, Steamy Stacks, which is uh, my favorite, uh, uh, POI of uh, chapter 2, because, I mean, come on guys, it's a cube-powered uh, uh, power station. Like, what is there not to, um, uh, what is there not to like about it? Because it looks a lot like, um, a um, nuclear power plant. Although you could argue that it also looks like a, um, uh, charcoal um, uh, burning plant, so there's that. And the only reason I know that is due to the fact that uh, 
uh, there's an attraction in um, in Africa, uh, in a place called Orlando Towers, where um, it's basically a suspended catch air device or SCAD for short, and. I know that because of a YouTuber that goes by the name Theme Park Crazy, who happens to be uh, one of my favorites due to um, him uh, providing a um, uh, a perspective into thrill rides uh, that uh, I have not seen yet. Um, one of my favorite videos of his happens to be. It happens to be his um, unique and uh, uh, crazy carnival rides. Um, he's put out two, and I forget exactly what names that he gave to them, but uh, it's something along the line of unique and crazy carnival rides. So yeah, that's uh, that's that done. And uh, let me tell you something. He's shown off some gems. I I have uh, I kind of have a uh, idea to uh, put out to a uh, ride countdown of my own, but um, yeah, but I would have to um, get some. Uh, I would have to do a lot of preparation first and. Uh, that could take some time. Alright, here we go. Now we are going for the challenges to collect gold bars and use food consumables. So, the collect gold bars in particular was a very, very, very long challenge. As none of us, none of the participants of the, the score war, were particularly good at bounty hunting. Maybe Mirage was. I, I would have to review his footage again in order to see for sure. But uh, I think none of the uh, participants were really that great at uh, at collecting bounties. To be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> I know for a fact I and Jester weren't. So that's where um that's where this challenge gets long. Um I don't uh, particularly um uh, like the idea of uh, of stealing from like uh, uh tills or safes, but uh, taking it from um uh, uh, taking it from enemy players that probably have already done so, that... Mm, let's just call that a gray area and, uh, and be done with it. Mm. Also, chests. Since, uh, yeah, since uh, the whole objective of the game is to open chests and to use the weapons inside of said chests, to take out the opponents in the first place, there's really no point in them um, uh, stressing out about uh, uh, getting the um, uh, gold bars there because clearly the uh, clearly that's meant for you. Uh, to be honest, like it's a it's kind of a necessary evil, if you will, because. And the um, the fact of the matter is, you need weapons to survive this game mode. So, chests are one of the best places to find those, and that's the um, end all be all right there. I mean, sure, you can. Um, you can get them from uh, you can get them from supply drops as well, and uh, those uh, weapons happen to be you know, some of the best in the game. But the most common place that you're going to find your loot 
is in a chest. I mean, there is floor loot, don't get me wrong. But, I mean, you get more out of a chest. That that's just a, that's just a given. Anyway, after having uh, taken out uh, those guys and uh, getting a pretty good record uh, on the board right now, um, I'm basically just uh, searching uh, Weepin Woods for the. Yeah, for any sign of consumable items, like mushrooms or uh, the like. It's not until I get really close to the desert that I actually find any. So, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm just going into the desert to, by choice. Okay, maybe not because I just checked my challenges and then went back into the woods. So... There is a chance that uh, the challenge that I'm going for in that case was to get rid of uh, chairs and uh, and beds and other stuff with uh, a harvesting tool. But with me not really going into the house it's more likely that I'm actually going for consumable items. So, yeah, there's that. And I believe it's right around here, yeah, it's right around here that I actually get those uh, yeah, items uh, picked up. And that sound means that uh, the Mandalorian has uh, spotted somebody. And I was praying that it was not me, because that guy is tough. Alrighty. Looks like that round is over with. So, the next one in line is... Survive Storm Phases. This one is only about 2 minutes and 8 seconds. But... As uh, uh, short and simple as it is, I believe you are going to be um, uh, getting some action in this scene. So, with, uh, uh, with that in mind, I pick up a zero point crystal, having learned uh, uh, what its uh, effects are. I forget it who exactly I heard was doing this uh, out of us, but uh, ever since they started, um, yeah, the rest of us picked up on it to, like, uh, uh, fish to water. So, yeah. Also, I am really flexing my, um, uh, skill with a, um, uh, assault rifle right now. And, uh, if you uh, knew exactly, um, how much skill that was, um, you would be terrified. Like, uh, I'm not even joking. In Chapter 2, Season 2, I managed over a hundred kills with the assault rifle alone. Yeah. That's a really good number. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, pretty well more than any other weapon uh, that I have used at that point. So... Needless to say, um, the, um, the, the weapon that gets uh, the um, uh, mythic rank uh, in my um, uh, uh, experience is pretty obvious. This challenge was honestly a little bit, um, how shall I say, maybe irritating? Because it involved Ragnarok and uh, Tomato Head arguing over whether or not uh, uh, Big Chuggas was one of the ancient ones. And it all starts with the challenge to pick up books from Holly Hedges and some other place, I forget exactly which. Um, anyway. Point is, 
I chose Holly Hedges because I figured that place was going to be less packed with people than, than the other place. So, very clearly, um, it's a place where, um, where the sweats go. And by sweats, we mean uh, people that play aggressively, build like madmen, and just play to win. That's, uh, uh, that's literally how we define the sweats. Um, but, with that comes uh, uh, some incredibly brutal skill. Like, neither I nor Jester can actually play against that style. That is our weakness. So if somebody comes after us building like madmen and, uh, and just uh, using every angle they can to dispatch us, Odds are, they're going to succeed. So... And then there's the case where, um... People like that show up. And, uh... After a pretty tense battle, we do manage to dispatch them. So, uh, yeah. Those guys are, um... I'd say pretty even with us, because you know, we're pretty experienced, we've been at this for like, four years at this point, because since May has passed, um, well, I've been at it for four years, um, Jester, on the other hand, you know what? Maybe he has too, because he started in uh, season six, and I believe that was sometime in September, maybe. So October, maybe I know for sure because uh, it was the Halloween season after all. It had uh, characters like Fable, Calamity, Dire. There's the second and the final book that I pick up this round. But case in point, um, at this point I think we do both have four years of experience under our belt. Because... <sighs> Like I said before, uh, uh, Chapter 1, Season 6 was a Halloween season, and that's already um, uh, pretty well past here. Despite being a continuation here, there really isn't anything um, uh, concerning the books that I do in this round uh, any further. So, I eventually leave Holly Hedges and move on with the challenge too. Survive storm phases and collect gold bars. So, during pre production, I thought this and a clip in the uh, episode coming up was uh, one and the same. But, upon closer inspection, I found out that nothing could be further from the truth. As this had less progress in the challenge than the one in the um, later episode. So, yeah. After taking down that guy, I basically applied the bandages until either I get up to 75 or I run out of bandages, whichever comes first. So, Given that this goes up at a rate of about 15 per pop... Oh, well look at that. <laughs> I think I accomplished both. <laughs> That's pretty easy to do, honestly, because... Um, the, um, the bandages, uh, they recover about 15 of your health per pop. 
as I've said before. So, um, yeah. I then apply a big pot uh, to gain full shield back. If I had it in the last round, that is. Um, and sorry about my um, uh, foggy memory, but uh, in my defense, um, even if I did research this recently, my memory is terrible, and so is Marty Jester's, so... <sighs> so there's that. Anyway... <sighs> I search through Holly Hedges uh, for uh, signs of the last book, but by the time I find out where it is, the storm is uh, practically already here. Either that, or I for uh, or I just give up entirely and uh, move on. <laughs> um, and as you can tell by my level, um, uh, we are already pretty far into the season. So, uh, yeah. There are some challenges that you will not be able to see, uh, in, on my side. And uh, pretty much all of the uh, Spies Within sets are among those challenges, unfortunately. It's not really, though, like you're going to be missing much, because... As you can tell from uh, this clip, um, I don't really have mic audio on, per se. So, despite hearing the book nearby, I never pick up on where the book actually is. I believe I saw a glow, uh, I believe I saw a glow some time ago, but... Yeah. I never really, uh, pick up on the fact where, um, uh, that, uh, the book, uh, uh was, uh, in that particular building, in that particular spot. And there are many things that I and Jester miss in, uh, live, uh, uh playthroughs that we, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, catch when uh, we uh, review the footage sometimes other times um, uh, we are still just as blind as we were during said playthroughs mostly because we don't know exactly what it is we're searching for so <laughs> yeah that uh that ends up being a, um, a rather awkward situation. But, in the case of these books, I found uh, I saw where one of them was during the uh, editing phase of, or reviewing phase, both actually, of, uh, of these clips. And... In the next episode, you're going to be seeing an example of my blindness very, very shortly, I think. See, let me look at this. Alright. I believe it would be the second one in that. So, yeah. Also, uh, just a little bit of spoilers. Um, uh, there is going to be a head scratcher in the next episode because I still to this day don't know what happened. <laughs> I mean, it is a bizarre situation and it involves one of the challenges. So I'm not going to say too much more on the matter, but this guy takes me out and uh, shows you exactly what I got up to here. And it's all progress, no completion. And here we are, the last round. And this one happens to be Survive Storm Phases. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, this is the longest clip in the episode, 
clocking in at a length of 6 minutes and 42 seconds. Comparatively, the last clip is the second longest at 6 minutes and 21 seconds. So... Yeah. Suffice it to say, the last two clips are pretty well the longest in the whole thing. And probably the most uneventful as well. Because as of um, as of the start of this episode, this is uh, this is a rel rather uh, this is a rather disappointing round. Uh, this is a rather disappointing episode because I get absolutely nothing done. So. If I don't get anything done in this particular round, well then, the only thing I can do for this episode is cut my losses, uh, write up my total, and move on to plan the next episode. That's all I can do in this situation. Huh. <laughs> <sighs> This is probably going to be a long score war for me, because I have uh, I have got a pretty low score. Although then again, uh, Jester has only uploaded one episode of the whole uh, series, so I don't exactly know how well he's doing at the moment, because uh, he's had a ceasefire longer than I have. So, yeah. <clears throat> but we're both back. And you're probably going to be uh, seeing some new characters starting Monday. Um, I mean, I know for sure that you have not seen this guy before. And uh, he's probably going to be the... Um, well... I don't know that for sure, so I'm not going to say very much on the topic, but I was going to say he's probably going to be the last character that we actually introduce. I could be wrong. There could be more. So at this point, we have four characters uh, running the show, and uh, one of them is... Uh, uh, now, more of a behind-the-scenes type character that's, uh, uh, that's working his uh, magic in uh, Fortnite Follies right now. The other three are pretty well main characters that are, um, uh, that are going through their own story. And those three happen to be myself, Marty Jester, and... Vaxi, the various uh, droid models that you've been seeing. There's only one more character out of the original four that uh, we have yet to introduce, and he's going to be a uh, he's going to be someone straight out of Star Wars, to be a fair. And before you say anything, um. Let me be blunt. It's nobody you know. I mean, he's going to look like somebody that you know, but his personality and his weapons and even his backstory is going to be vastly different than the character model that you're going to be seeing on screen. So there's that. <laughs> And yes, I do realize that I am breaking the fourth wall here. Um, honestly speaking, I'm just preparing you for uh, no what's to come. And this channel is no stranger to fourth uh, fourth wall breaks. There's a lot of them, and uh, for whatever reason, I turned the radio off. I guess I wasn't a big fan of the music that plays. 
Um, but Party Royale is one of it is the only safe radio station that uh, I and Jester know of. So I couldn't have uh, turned it off for copyright reasons, especially seeing as how. I was not uh, uh, originally planning to put this on YouTube in the first place. The uh, uh, the planning of that uh, only recently took place. And of course, I have uh, found myself in uh, Salty Towers. And you know what that means? Especially seeing as how the only weapon that I have to my name is a charged shotgun. While powerful, neither I nor Jester really love this weapon. I've heard that Jester's um, his opinion of it has changed ever since uh, Raven taught him exactly how to use it. But it's not his favorite still, so there's that. Alrighty, that seems to be about it for this episode. Join me in the next one when I eliminate to opponents with common weapons, collect gold bars, swim at Lazy Lake, deal melee damage, signal coral buddies, deal damage while in water, survive storm phases, get assault rifle eliminations, and the cryptocurrency legacy. In the meantime though, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Until then, adios amigos.